So today we're going to work on a color shift effect in DaVinci Resolve Studio. And this is a powerful technique, very simple, very powerful for creating some very um, sort of wild effects in your footage. Okay, and it's going to be done with one tool. The meat of the effect will be done with the color warper. Okay, but I want to show you how you can go a little bit beyond and add sort of um, to your grade to this effect and make it a little bit more believable. Okay, so as always with all color grading, um, we're gonna start off by working on our primaries. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about like sharpening or noise reduction or anything like that. We're just gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna take this first node and name it primaries. And then here, we're gonna go into our gain, gamma lift wheels and just set the exposure wherever we want. Actually, I'm not going to keep it too bright. I'm liking that. That's fine. Okay. Let's bring in our vector scopes. And in the same node, I'm going to bring up the saturation a bit. Next, I'm just gonna grab my offset wheel and drag it a little bit to the left, add some yellow to it. And that's good. Okay, so now that we've set our primaries, we're gonna hit option S or you know, right click, add node, serial node, and create a new node. And we're gonna rename this uh, red. Depending on your project, whatever you need, you know, you can use the same technique to shift a hue to a different hue, um, whichever hue you want to whatever hue you want, um, depending on what you need. But for the sake of this project, of this, you know, image, what we want to do is take all this green and yellow foliage and turn it red, okay? And we're going to do that with the color warper tool. Very simple, we're gonna take our green and yellow hues and shift them over to the red hue. Okay, and as you can see, that basically creates that red foliage effect. If we go back to our original image and we look at the vector scope, we can see, you know, all this here is sitting mostly in our yellow, but it does, you know, push a little bit towards green. So that's why we want these two um, parts of this web to shift over to the red. Okay, and now I'm gonna click and drag to highlight all these points and select them all. And now I'm just gonna play around with it and put it somewhere where I feel like looks a little bit more believable, right? This was obviously, you know, a little too oversaturated, but you know, if that's the kind of effect you want, that's fine. Um, Keep it somewhere around here. If I look at my vector scope, I can see, you know, it's not a true red, right? It's a little bit more to, towards the yellow side. That's exactly what I want. Okay, and now the way I want to think about this going forward is this is my base. This is my Rec 709. Yes, we have created here a an effect, but I want to now treat this as this is what the camera shot. So now we're gonna add a look to it, right? And, and taking into account um, this red color that we've added, I'm gonna use a complementary color, cyan, to build our look. And it's gonna be very simple. So I'm gonna add a serial node and just rename it real quick, look. And I'm gonna go into my offset wheel and just push that towards the cyan. And just... Massage it around, see where I want it, see where I like it. That's good right there. Now we've got a really good color contrast in this image. We did have that a little bit before because just naturally this, uh, you know, we had some cyan, some very desaturated cyan uh, in this waterfall and this uh, terrain down here. Uh, but now we've just sort of, uh, you know, brought up the saturation uh, of that, and now we have this really nice uh, color contrast going on. 
Next up, we're gonna relight the image a little bit. So I'm gonna add a serial node and rename this uh, vignette. And I'm gonna go into my power windows, add a circular window, feather it all the way. Um, I think, you know, technically the subject of this shot would be the waterfall. So I'm just gonna highlight the waterfall and I wanna feather it out. Nice. There you go. Now that that's set there, I'm gonna invert the mask. And so now we're affecting everything on the outside of the oval. I'm gonna go into my curves adjustment, hit these three um, red little dots and activate edible splines. Hit shift H to deactivate the mask preview. And I'm gonna grab this anchor here and just bring it down. And I'm looking at my Parade, just making sure it's not too dark. And that's good right there. Just to bring it down just a little bit. Now I'm gonna right click on my vignette node, add node, add outside node. And now I'm gonna rename this light and, or subject. You can rename it whatever you want. And I'm gonna go into my curves adjustment, same thing. Uh, click this top anchor, making sure edible splines is turned on. Click this top anchor to bring up this anchor here and then just bring that up. And now we're affecting just our waterfall. Good. So if we turn both of these nodes on and off, you can see it's very subtle, but we just we're just helping the eye focus a little bit on the center of the frame. Okay, now that we've uh, done this, I wanna add just a final touch to this overall look and that's and also create a, sort of a bit of a moody effect, a moody fade to this shot. So what I'm gonna do is create a serial node, rename this fade, and this effect is very simple and it's very popular. You see it all over Instagram and all over YouTube and it's very popular, it gives you that sort of washed out, pseudo filmic look. And it's very simple to make, we're just gonna go into our curves here, hit these three uh, little dots again and hit add default anchors. And then you wanna turn off edible splines. Next we're gonna go down here to this uh, bottom anchor and just bring it up. And then as you can see that creates that, you know, sort of washed out look. And just find a place where we like it. That's good right there. Make sure that all of your channels are linked together. You don't wanna affect just your alpha channel or your red channel. Um, you wanna make sure that they're all together. You can do that by clicking right here. Now, the last thing I wanna do is just add a little bit more cyan and specifically make this fade that I added to the entire image a little, just a little bit more cyan. Keeping in mind, cyan is opposite of red on the color wheel and the in the vector scope, the way we're gonna add cyan is by removing or subtracting red. So we're gonna go into our red channel in the curves and bring down this anchor here. As you can see, we don't wanna go too far because that's bringing in too much cyan. But just enough to affect, you know, these darker spots of the image. That's good right there. What this also does, here's the before and this after, is here I'll show you the before. We can notice, you know, we do have some sort of uh, contrast, you know, some, you know, brighter spots, some more saturated spots and some less saturated spots and darker spots. And this fade, adding cyan to this fade um, just helps us create a little bit more separation because now you can see there's definitely some darker spots that look, you know, it, makes it look like maybe this foliage here is not as healthy as this or you know this up here is obviously a little brighter because it's closer to uh, the light source but you know stuff down here that maybe was just a little too um, oversaturated or bright now you know looks a little bit more natural you know farther away from the light so it's a little darker and it also helps create this sort of gradient from these darker less prominent spots to like these more up in your face spots. 
and it helps sort of bring the whole image together. And that's basically it. So the meat of our effect is here in the color warper tool in this node here. Now you know how you can move around your hues and create these kind of really cool um, color shift effects, right? And also how to sort of go about adding a look to that and keeping in mind, you know, the color that you've just added and making decisions in your style, in your look to complement that. If you have any questions, doubts, confused about anything, have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you for watching.